This problem involves a liquid with a specific gravity of 0.7 flowing in a pipe. Goal one is to identify the instruments. We're told to list the names. Goal two is to show how an engineer calculates pressure and velocity from the given information. We have a column height of three feet here, a column height of two feet here, and the flow is going in this direction. This is called a stagnation tube or a pitot tube. This is called a piezometer and whenever I see a stagnation tube and a piezometer I think immediately of measuring pressure and measuring velocity. For example, in this sketch I see a manometer and I see a measurement of static pressure right here and a measurement of kinetic pressure right there and I look at this apparatus and I go aha measuring pressure and measuring velocity. To analyze the piezometer I make a sketch and I'm going to apply the hydrostatic equation so I'm going to apply it between point B and a point right at the top of the water column and I identify my column height as two feet and I notice that this is the pressure at A divided by the specific weight of the liquid. So when I apply the hydrostatic equation I get this equation and that gives me an equation for the pressure at B and I can grid this out and the pressure at B is 87.4 pounds force per square foot gauge. To calculate the velocity what I do is I apply the Bernoulli equation. So I make my system diagram as usual I sketch the streamline, identify points A and B as usual. I write the general form of the Bernoulli equation. I do term by term analysis as shown here. Here's the reduced equation. Then I substitute numbers in, do grid, and the velocity at A is 8.03 feet per second. Here is how I went about measuring performance. I said part A was worth two points, part B was worth five points. On part A, if you simply got the right answers, this is a piezometer, this is either a pitot tube or a static tube, it has both labels, you got two points and I subtracted a, a point for wrong answers. For part B, there's five points I used my usual rubric. If you're doing effective engineering and you have your knowledge down, that's competent and that gets five points. If you're on track and that means you either have the right answer or you're doing an effective engineering um, process less one or two key items, that's worth three points. And if you're beginning or in the not yet category, that's worth zero, one, or two points. Here is what effective engineering practice looks like. We see a system diagram. We see points labeled. We see the main equation identified. We see term by term analysis. We see the general equation goes into the reduced equation. We see grid, carrying and canceling units. And we see a correct answer in the context of a homework problem. So if you got six to seven points on this, this means you're doing competent work. You have the skills and knowledge to be doing, uh, to be successful as an engineer. If you scored in the four to five points, this means you're on track. You're doing the right things, but you're missing a few key ideas. If you're in the zero to three point category, you're in the beginner category or not yet. And this means you might want to reconsider how you're doing things or come get some help. And if you're in the seven plus points category, this means you're really excelling. You're doing great engineering work. I am super motivated to help my students grow. So here's two super useful things that you can do. One, ask yourself the question, what are the key things I learned about fluid mechanics? And then write down as many ideas as possible. The second thing you can do is say, what did I learn about doing engineering in a fun, simple, and effective way? And again, write down as many ideas as possible. 
the more you do this reflective thinking process, the faster you're going to learn and grow and get fluid mechanics down, and that's why we're here. We'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video.